Hey everyone, this is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of Iry Financial. Welcome to another episode of Ad Bits, where I will be sharing bits of knowledge about self-directed retirement. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of AdBits. Today, I'm talking about who can set up an IRA. So this sounds like an easy topic, but it's actually a little bit more complicated than it sounds. So today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about who can set up an IRA. So it's pretty simple. In fact, even though there are some added complexities that we'll get into, on its face, there's two ways you can set up an IRA. You can set up by making contributions from your earnings. We'll talk about what earnings are in a second. Or you can roll over funds from an existing retirement account, another IRA or SEP IRA, simple, Roth, 401k, 403b, 457, so long as you have access to those funds and you can fund the IRA by rollover. So those are the two ways that you can start an IRA. Let's talk about contributions. In order to make a contribution to an IRA, you need to have what's called compensation. Now, wages, salaries is the most common type of compensation. It also could be commissions or self-employment income or taxable alimony, separate maintenance, or non-taxable combat pay. What it doesn't include is earnings and profits from a business, interest and dividend income, pension or annuity income, deferred comp, income from certain partnerships, capital gains, or social security, disability. So that is not deemed earned income. So if all you have is social security, or if you're retired, or you just have passive income like interest, dividends, or capital gains, you are not able to fund an IRA with contributions. You can do it with a rollover, assuming you have another IRA or SEP IRA or a former employer 401k, you can fund it with that. Now, one thing to note with contributions, or I should say rollovers, if you have money in an employer 401k or 403b or 457, there's something called a triggering event. So you may think that it's your money, and it is, but you can't touch that money until you're 59 and a half, so, or you leave your job. So if you still work at Google or company ABC, and you have a 401k or a profit sharing or a 457, 403B, you're under 59 and a half, you still work there. Even though it's your money, the 401k rules do not allow you to pull that money out. So in those cases, the only way you can fund an IRA is through contributions or through a former employer retirement account. So thanks to the SECURE Act, which was passed in 2019, you can now make contributions to a pre-tax IRA over the age of 70 and a half. The old rule was you are not able to make contributions to a pre-tax IRA over the age of 70 and a half. Now for purposes of this podcast, I'm gonna focus on the pre-tax IRA. The next podcast I will do will be on how to open a Roth IRA, which is an after-tax account, which has different income thresholds. So for purposes of this podcast, let's talk about pre-tax IRAs. So we know you need compensation or you need a retirement plan that you have access to, such as a former employer 401k or a current employer 401k or 403 or 457, where you're over 59 and a half. So now that you know that you have access to funds and you are eligible to open an IRA, let's talk about contributions. So in general, when you make IRA contributions, they're tax deductible. That That is one of the benefits of making contributions to an IRA is that what you contribute is tax deductible. Now for the 2021 taxable year, the maximum you can put in is 6,000 or 7,000 if you're over 50. So obviously you need to have enough compensation, right? You can't defer more than you make. So if you only made $2,000 in commissions, you're not gonna be able to make a contribution of 4,000 or 6,000 or 7,000. You're gonna be limited to that amount. Now one other wrinkle is if you're married and your spouse has income, you can piggyback off your spouse. So for example, you have $2,000 in commissions and your spouse has $100,000 of income. You can piggyback and grab $5,000 from your spouse and 
reach the maximum of $7,000 for your IRA contribution for 2020 or 2021. Now you can make IRA contributions up until April 15th of the following year. So for 2020, you can make contributions up until April 15th, 2021. There are no extensions. So the 2020 contributions must be done by 2021, April 15th. 2021 contributions must be done by April 15th, 2022. Okay, so now we know you can fund an IRA through compensation, right, earnings, or through rollovers. Contributions are generally pre tax. So they're tax deductible, which is good. Reduce your taxable income. They got to be made by April 15th of the following year. Now, what happens if you have access to a 401k at work? Are you allowed to deduct the entire amount you contribute to an IRA? So you would think the answer is yes, but in fact, it's not. And that's the complexity I talked about. And I guess that's why you know, people like me go to law school and even do a master's in taxation because the tax code is more complicated than it should be. The answer probably should be, yeah, you should just be able to contribute the six or $7,000 and get a deduction, no matter if you have access to a 401k plan at work, no matter how much you contribute, whether it's 19,500 or 26,000, if you're over 50, you should be able to get that added $6,000, $7,000 deduction. Come on, it's not that much money. But the IRS wants to limit the ability to deduct. Why? More deductions you get, less taxable income you pay, less money the government has to spend on schools and roads and the military or whatever else they, they want to spend or you know give us all free money. So whatever they're going to do with the money, they need more of it. So actually the rules are if you have access to a 401k at work, even if you don't put a dollar in that plan, as long as you have access to a 401k, if you're single, okay, and you make less than $76,000, you are able to have a deduction. So between 66 and 76,000, you get a partial deduction of what you put into the IRA. Under 66,000, you can deduct whatever you put into the IRA, even if you have access to a 401k at work. If you make more than $76,000 and you have access to a 401k at work, you get no tax deduction for your IRA contribution. Now, if you're married, okay, and you make $105,000 or less, married and filed jointly, you can deduct your IRA contribution even if you have access to a 401k at work. If you make between one hundred five and one twenty five, dollars you get a partial deduction. If you make more than $125,000 and you have access to a 401k at work, even if you don't make a dollar of contributions to that plan, you are not able to get a tax deduction for the amount you contribute to your IRA. Kind of a silly rule, but again, the whole idea is to limit the amount you deduct. So that in a nutshell is IRAs, who is eligible to make IRA contributions, how much you can contribute, when you can contribute it, and how much of the IRA pre-tax deductions are deductible. In the next podcast, if you're interested, which hopefully you are, check out how to make Roth contributions, who's eligible to open up a Roth IRA, when they're due, and learn all about the powers of the Roth IRA. So really, really, really appreciate everyone's support. Thanks so much for all you guys that are listening and watching on YouTube. Got an amazing feedback uh, on AdBits. Really proud of it. Uh, the goal is to kind of build out really like a university curriculum. So if you're able to spend, whether it's weeks or months or years, kind of just going through these AdBit weekly podcasts over a certain period of time, you'll basically educate yourself on every facet of IRAs and 401ks, at least all the important parts uh, that I think you'll need to become the best retirement investor you can be. So the idea is to do it slowly, hopefully you know, 10 to 15 minutes at a time, not bore the heck out of you, just give you some real nuggets of information, bits of important information on each specific topic. And at the end of the day, whether it's weeks or months or years, you'll have all the info you need to become a super, super self-directed retirement investor. So again, thank you so much for listening and watching. Really appreciate it. Just want to make sure everyone stays safe and healthy. Um, and uh, again, subscribe if you haven't, please. Give it a like if you wish. Um, if you have questions, you can send them in to me uh, and I, I will do my best to answer them. 
on AdMail, which is another weekly podcast I do where I tackle three of the best questions of the week from clients or non-clients, uh, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, or um, just info at IRA Financial. If you want to just reach out by email, love to hear from you. Hopefully you can challenge me and uh, I'll learn uh, a little bit more about your questions and hopefully educate myself and help better educate you. So again, really appreciate everyone for listening and watching. I know there's a lot of other uh, content out there, but really appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, Thanks again. Stay safe and talk to everyone again next week.